my name's Justin Hansen. This is Miranda D. Berg, and this is Curtis Pratt. And we are studying the analysis of AMDR protein from Actinomyces naslundi. Um, Jacqueline Lemire and Deborah Adino um, are not in this video. Uh, so we are studying um, a bacteria that is linked to tooth decay, periodontal disease, and possibly heart disease. Um, this bacteria requires iron for survival. Um, AMDR is a, a our protein of interest. Um, as you can see here, it controls cytoerophore synthesis genes and the presence of iron. AMDR blocks cytoerophore synthesis genes because it doesn't need iron. Um, in the absence of iron, AMDR allows cytoerophore synthesis. The cytoerophores are iron gathering structures that go out and bring back iron to the cell for survival. Um, on to our purification. Um, for the first step during purification is we break open our cells, um, and that includes hundreds of proteins, um, including AMDR. Um, and we need to go about separating AMDR from um, the other hundreds of proteins. Um, due to the six histidines uh, in AMDR, we can. Uh, they have a natural attraction to the nickel, and uh, so we use nickel affinity chromatography. And um, when those, when we put our samples uh, through the chromatography, uh, AMDR binds to the to the nickel beads, and all of the other hundreds of contaminants flow through. So, let, so we're left with just AMDR. And then we use imidazole to um, break the bonds between nickel and AMDR, so we're left with just our protein sample. And that's how we purify AMDR. In addition to purifying the AMDR protein, we also want to generate our target DNA in which the AMDR protein would theor theoretically bind to. And we did that using a method called polymerase chain reaction, or PCR. PCR is basically a technique to generate multiple copies of DNA from just a single strand of DNA. Following, following PCR, we want to run an agarose gel to verify that our PCR method worked. And as you can see here, there are four bright bands in four different lanes, and that shows that our PCR did actually work successfully. So following the gel run, we want to perform an agarose gel extraction to purify the DNA generated in PCR for use in our EMSA analysis. So following PCR with Miranda, we in synthesizing of the DNA, we performed electrophoretic mobility shift assay. In doing so, what we're trying to do is get our target DNA and our target protein to bind together. And then we used a control kit to simulate what we really wanted to, to achieve. So the EMSA binding of the control kit was successful here. And in, what I mean by that is in our DNA and protein, when we mix them together, they bound. So our base pairs are larger here than what they were here. And when we bumped off our unbound label DNA, we were able to see the shift back down. Uh, the, the, there was other means of, of proving the same data, so we also used the analytical ultra centrifuge. An analytical ultra centrifuge basically spins samples at a very high speed and takes continuous measurements as far as how far DNA and proteins migrate within the sample. And from this data, from this data here, we can see that. The, the, the likely peak represents DNA without protein, and it has an S value, which, which basically measures the weight of the sample. And the lower the S va value, the higher the um, molecule is within the tube that's being centrifuged. And then the, the, the darker blue the darker blue line represents the DNA with, with the protein bound, and as it has a higher S value, that we can conclude that the DNA and protein did bind, bind as well in the control using this method. So fo following, following
doing a analog walk to centrifuge control kit, we also want to perform ultracentrifugation on our protein because we were curious if our protein was not binding to our, our, the DNA that we purified using affinity chromatography because maybe the protein was clumped together or another term is aggregated. And if the protein, if our protein is clumped, then that means that the, pro, that the binding sites for the DNA to bind that to attach to would be blocked and so binding would be prevented. So this ultracentrifugation shows a single peak and, and the S value of two indicates that the protein was not the protein was not clumped. So the R, R, R E N S A did not fail because of clumping of the AMDR proteins. If if clumping if clumping were present we would see multiple higher peaks represented in higher S values here, here, or here. So our, our future directions are basically to allow for the appropriate conditions to, to allow for our AMDR to bind to our proteins to perfect our EMSA.